My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the best high dividend REIT ETF from Vanguard in ticker symbol VNQ. I'm gonna walk through in this video everything that you need to know when it comes to investing into this ETF and exactly what you're going to be getting when you invest into an ETF like VNQ. For those of you that have been following the channel, you know that I invest into physical real estate here in Austin, Texas. The market here in Texas is very different than in California, New York, Michigan, where Wherever you may be, if you're an investor who really isn't the type of person that wants to manage your own real estate portfolio and you don't really maybe have the capital, you don't qualify for a loan, you don't have the expertise or really know how of running your own business or your real estate business, because I will say owning a rental property is like owning a business. You have to understand the tax implication that comes with that. Sure, you could hire a, you know an accountant to do it for you, but everything that you hand off to somebody else eats away at your total return. In my experience with investing into real estate, having done everything myself, it was a lot of work and it is still a lot of work. But for my wife and I, we're not looking to invest into physical real estate and be landlords in early retirement, but we still wanna get exposure to the real estate market. And that's where investing into individual REITs or a REIT ETF comes into play. So in today's video, we're gonna cover four topics. The first, we're gonna take a deep dive into VNQ and I'm gonna share with you everything that you need to know for the most part when it comes to investing into this ETF. We're gonna talk about the fund methodology. We're gonna talk about the dividend metrics, the history of the yield. We're gonna talk about a little bit about the tax structure and all of that important stuff that you're gonna to need to know as an investor into VNQ. Second, we're gonna talk about growth versus value REITs. I think this is very important. When you think about real estate, you have to understand that not all real estate is created equal. There's value oriented real estate and there's growth oriented real estate. Let me give you an example. You could think of it as investing into Microsoft as a growth component versus investing into maybe IBM, which is a more of a blue chip, slower growing technology company. You have the exact same thing in real estate. And then third, we're gonna compare investing into VNQ versus the S&P 500. What would have been the historical performance if you would have invested into VNQ or the S&P 500? And then last, I'm gonna talk about how VNQ fits into my dividend strategy as someone who's looking to reach financial independence and retire early off of my dividend portfolio and what kind of a role VNQ and Q plays into that. I found that investing into real estate, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and there's a lot of things that, you know, people have the mindset, it's not my job. So they don't do certain things. Maybe you have a tenant that's living in the home that doesn't really tell you if there's, you know, damages or repairs needed because it's not their job. They don't own the building. They don't really care. Or if you have a contractor working on a repair and they maybe cut edge, you know, cut corners or don't do everything like you would like them to because of this whole mindset, it's not their job. And I think if you're going to get into to real estate investing, you have to understand the it's not my job is a reality and it can look a little like this. Oh my gosh, they pay me to install pipes, not to move rocks. Yeah, the struggle is real. Oh my gosh. All right, so VNQ is an ETF, it's a real estate focused ETF. So you have to think of it, for example, there's a handful of REIT companies, so real estate investment trusts, there's about 200 on the market today, and you're getting exposure to a large majority of them all at once with one investment, for example, through VNQ. So the objective of VNQ is to seek to provide a high level of income and moderate long-term capital appreciation by tracking the performance of a benchmark index that measures the performance of publicly traded equity REITs and other real estate related investments. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. So first off, this is focused on equity REITs. If you're not sure exactly what a REIT is or the different sectors within REITs, I've shared a couple of videos going into detail on real estate investment trusts. So I'll leave a link to a few different videos in the description below on a few different videos that I've made around real estate investment trusts. So this fund is focused on creating income and long-term appreciation. So you're getting that a mixture of growth 
and value in one ETF. And the most important thing, when you're investing into any ETF, you have to understand what is the methodology or what is the approach or the benchmark index that you're, you're getting with that ETF. And so that's the important thing here, that this ETF tracks the MSCI US Investable Market Real Estate 25 50 index. Now, I know that's a mouthful and we'll get into that in just a second, but that's important that you have to understand this is a passive index from Vanguard, but it's following an index that is already established. So whatever the performance of the index, essentially that's going to be your return as an investor in VNQ. So a few things to definitely highlight are the expense ratio. For example, the expense ratio is 0.12%. This is a little bit higher than you know your traditional S&P 500 or maybe a, a dividend ETF in SCHD or VYM. The inception date was the end of 2004. So this ETF has actually been around for quite some time. There's currently 170 holdings. So as I mentioned on the market right now, traded publicly here in the US at least, there's, there's roughly you know, about 200 REITs out there. The performance of VNQ is going to track that benchmark, right? That, that benchmark that we're gonna to get to in a second. So this light bluish teal color is VNQ. The gray color is the benchmark. And so you can see over time, pretty much to a T, the two have mirrored each other's performance. When looking at the sector weighting, you can see that specialized REITs are the highest weighted in this index. Now, a specialty REIT can be many of one of many things. For example, you could have cell towers, it could be a farmland REIT, it could be you know, cyclical or non-cyclical. There's really a, a lot of different areas that could you know, class, be classified as specialty REITs. The ones that I talk about the most on my channel are around cell towers. The second is gonna be residential REITs. This is something that you could think about as multifamily, right? If you visit a big, a big city you know, where they have multifamily units, that would be, for example, a residential REIT. Industrial REITs, this is something that I also talk a lot about. This could be you know, warehouses. It could be a company that, that owns the warehouse or the distribution center for Amazon or another you know, major retailer, for example. You have retail REITs, shopping malls, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. So so the thing that I like about this is I like that it's focused more on growth oriented sectors in real estate. And another thing that I like about it, it's, it's not focused so much on the cyclical nature of real estate, where it's just really, really heavy into casinos. And if there's a market downturn, you're, you're gonna get major exposure to that. It's more of a risk averse approach to growth investing with real estate. Now, when we dive into the different holdings in this ETF, you'll notice that it starts off on this website with American Tower. But actually, if you go to the another website on Vanguard, you'll notice that the largest holding is a Vanguard Real Estate 2 Index Fund. Fund. And this index fund is an institutional version of VNQ, and it has the exact same holdings. It follows the exact same index. And I don't really know the real reason behind why they have it in there. So I want to use this page here. It's a little bit easier to view all of the holdings. So the largest individual REIT is going to be American Tower at 7%. This is a specialty REIT. You got Prologis. This is an, an industrial REIT. You have Crown Castle. This is another cell tower REIT or a special specialty REIT. You have Equinix. This is a data center. Public storage. This is self-storage. Simon Property. This is a, you know, a, a mall REIT or a retail REIT. Digital Realty Trust. This is a data center REIT. You got SPA Communications, CBR, Well Tower, etc. So it's really heavily skewed towards specialty being, you know, cell towers, data centers, for example. And if we go over here to the next page, you can see that, you know, there's there's probably some names on here that you're familiar with, right? With Realty Income. Uh, if you keep going down the list here, you can see one thing that actually caught my eye was actually Zillow. I actually didn't know that Zillow was part of this index. Um, but uh, yeah, you're getting a little bit exposure to Zillow for better or for worse. You got WP Carry down here. I'm a big fan of WP Carry. But the thing that I want to mention here is you look at this list here that, you know, the percentages are going down and down and down. You even got stag here. This is a really, really high quality industrial REIT. But the thing that I want to point out here is that stag, this is one of my favorite REITs in here. You got Omega Healthcare in here as well. Really high quality REITs, but they only make up a very small percentage 
of this index. And this is what we'll talk about later in this video of you know, how I kind of combat that low exposure to the higher yielders with VNQ in my own individual portfolio. So yeah, just want to highlight, yes, you're getting an exposure to STAG and Omega Healthcare with this REIT, but only very minimal exposure. So what is this index that VNQ is following? It's the MSCI US Real Estate 2550 Index, and it's really focused on capturing large, mid and small cap segments of the US equity universe. The index methodology of the MSCI 2550 index is it's looking at regulated investment companies. That would be the REIT, right? And what they're doing is, is that not one single company can represent over 25% of the index. Additionally, there cannot be over 50% of the companies in the index cannot represent over 5%. And this methodology is reviewed on a quarterly basis. To put this in layman terms, it really prevents overweighting in any specific company for the entire index. Now, when we dive into the dividend yield and the history of VNQ, it's important to note that over time, the yield has gone up and down. This is not an ETF that has, you know, long history of consecutive dividend increases. This is an ETF that has cut its dividend in the past and very likely will continue to raise and cut its dividend going forward. This is just the natural progression of an ETF like VNQ. So if we look at the dividend yield today, it's just under 3%. 3% for this ETF is at historic lows. This ETF traditionally trades at around 4%. So investing into VNQ today, you're really paying a high premium for this ETF. If we were to look back 10 years ago, if you purchase VNQ 10 years ago, your yield on cost would be at 6%. So what's interesting about this, because real estate is cyclical, it does go up and down, depending on when you buy into this ETF is really going to dictate your long and short term returns. So for example, if you would have bought into the financial crisis, right, if you would have bought VNQ in 2009, you would be currently yielding a 14% yield on cost on that initial purchase 12 years ago. So if you're a lump sum investor, and when you're looking at these charts here, I don't necessarily believe that today is the best time to lump sum invest into VNQ. However, if you are going to dollar cost average for the long term into an ETF like VNQ, based off of historical performance, which is never a guarantee of future performance, you can reasonably assume anywhere from a three to four and a half percent over the long term. When it comes to the taxes for investing into a REIT ETF like VNQ, you are not going to get as favorable tax treatment like you would with a dividend ETF like SCHD or VYM, for example. However, if you didn't invest into VNQ, you could expect a mixture of, you know, ordinary income as well as return of capital. What you're seeing here on your screen is my 1099 dividend form from M1 Finance. So if you're investing into a Roth IRA or a taxable account, when it comes tax time, you don't really have to do anything. You upload the document into TurboTax and you're good to go. Or if you're using an accountant, you would hand this, this document over to your accountant and your accountant would take care of it for you. It's not a very difficult process, but it is important to understand that the uh, the dividend here is going to be taxed at ordinary rates as well as return of capital. And if you're not exactly sure what that means, I would recommend you check out the other videos that I've shared on investing into REITs and the tax implications around that. The links are in the description below. Now, when you're investing into REITs, it's incredibly important that you understand that real estate is not the same across the board. It's the exact same thing with every other sector in the market. If you look at, for example, an industry like healthcare or materials or technology, you're going to find growth and value in every single sector of the market. Some sectors are skewed heavier towards growth or others are skewed heavier towards value. You will find something very similar with real estate. With real estate, it's not looking at the price to earning. So with traditional companies like a Microsoft, as an investor looking at the valuation, you're gonna look at the PE ratio. With real estate, you're looking at the funds from operation. This is FFO. And if you wanna calculate the price to earning ratio or how expensive a company is, what you're gonna to wanna to look at is the price to you know buy the funds from operation. And so if you look at this, you can see, for example, that PLD, 
Prologis is trading at a multiple of 38 and a half. This is very comparable to Microsoft. You're paying the same multiple valuation for Prologis as you would for Microsoft. However, if you look on the lower end down here, you can see that Omega Healthcare is trading at just a nine multiple, or MPW, these are both healthcare reads, is trading at just under a 13 multiple. So if you're looking for value, or if you're looking for growth, you can find both in real estate. And if you're a nerd like myself and you wanna check out this stuff on your own, you can check out this website. It's completely free. There's a lot of websites out there that charge for, charge for this information. At all rates, they provide all of the analysis, the data for free. You can check it out. And you can even check out by sector and, and, and everything. It's, it's pretty cool. Now let's compare the historical performance of VNQ with the S&P 500. In order to do this, we're gonna look at Portfolio Visualizer and look back from January 2005. We're gonna look at SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, and compare investing $10,000 in both ETFs back from 2005. If you would have invested $10,000, you would have seen a compounding annual growth rate in VNQ of just over eight and a half percent and a compounding annual growth rate of over 10% investing into the S&P 500. So in this case, looking back from 2005, you actually would have seen larger or greater returns with investing into the S&P 500. Now, what's interesting to me is to see the historical performance over time. When you look at the chart here, you can see up until about 2020, before the pandemic, the two portfolios would have tracked each other very similarly. With the S&P 500 just greatly being impacted by the pandemic and the, the majority of the index now comprising of technology companies, there's really no surprise that the S&P 500 has outperformed the real estate ETF in VNQ. What really catches my attention is when you look in 2008, where this was a financial crisis, a real estate financial crisis, you can see that both the S&P 500 and the you know, real estate ETF in VNQ performed very similarly in 2008. And then you can see here in 2020 that the real estate ETF got completely crushed compared to the S&P 500 in 2020. And when looking at this chart, what really gives me a lot of comfort is if you're a long-term investor, you've done very, very well investing both into the S&P 500 and investing into real estate. So now I wanna take a second and I wanna share with you why I invest into VNQ and what role it plays in my portfolio. So in my cash flow portfolio, I don't hold any real estate. In my real estate portfolio here in, in M1 Finance, this is really all about REITs. And I have it separate mostly for the tax implication because I, I view it separately and when I plan my taxes, I understand, okay, this is, this is how I personally do it. So in my portfolio, with my time horizon of four years, I'm focused more on current income. I'm really looking for a higher starting yield because I don't have the time for the portfolio to compound. And so my portfolio is skewed heavier towards companies that have a higher starting yield. For example, Good from Gladstone, WPC, these companies have a higher starting yield and they serve my wife and I's purpose of reaching fire sooner because of that higher starting yield. Whereas companies like, you know, here with DLR, a data center, this company is a great company, but it has a much lower starting yield. In my portfolio, I have a little bit of exposure to growth and I have exposure to REITs with a higher starting yield. But with VNQ, I really like incorporating VNQ into my portfolio for instant diversification. That's what it comes down to, diversification. And my other holdings here, you know, I'm getting very targeted with the type of companies that I own, right? I have Stag and I have Prologis. In my, you know, self storage, I have extra space storage and I have public storage. I want, you know, a little bit more extra exposure to some of these other companies like Realty Income, but I still want to get that growth from the other companies in real estate. And so with VNQ, once again, it's all about diversification. Investing into VNQ is the ultimate, it's not my job approach to investing into real estate. I will never have to, you know, replace a toilet, fix a plumbing leak when investing into an ETF like VNQ. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that this mindset of it's not my job when investing into real estate gets you really excited about investing 
in, into an ETF like VNQ. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll catch everybody in next week's video. You know what? I think we're gonna be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.